After news broke that Justin Timberlake is trying to sabotage the release of Britney Spears' memoir, reports resurfaced of how Kanye West never trusted Justin and allegedly tried to warn others about him. And I love the whole when I with that suit and tie. And for some reason, the crowd's going nuts. Suit and tie, of course, Jay-Z's collaboration with Justin Timberlake. Those are some serious fighting words. Britney Spears' tell-all memoir has been delayed once again because apparently Britney's ex, Justin Timberlake, interfered with the release of the book over fear that Britney would expose some shady things about him. Justin Timberlake is nervous boots. He had the PR team on it. He was apologizing, but it's too late. Meanwhile, a video of Kanye West dissing Justin resurfaced online, with fans saying Kanye tried to warn us a long time ago that Justin is not to be trusted. But is Justin really trying to block Britney's book? And why did Kanye call him out? Let's get into it. Justin Timberlake responds to Kanye West's sort of dig at the VMAs. Justin, I ain't trying to put you on blast, but I saw that man in tears, bro. Britney Spears' upcoming memoir, The Woman and Me, is set to be released later this year after multiple delays. And we're now hearing Britney's ex, Justin Timberlake, was responsible for the latest pushback. Meanwhile, reports emerged that Kanye West allegedly tried to warn Britney about her handlers. And when Justin publicly apologized to Britney in 2021 for the way he treated her, Kanye apparently thought Justin's apology was insincere and warned Britney not to trust him. And this isn't the first time we heard about Kanye showing sympathy for Britney, which makes sense considering that Kanye could have easily ended up under conservatorship just like Britney. See, Britney's former business manager, Lou Taylor, who reportedly masterminded Britney's conservatorship, is a close friend of the Kardashians. And back in 2016, when Kanye was put under involuntary psychiatric hold, many fans suspected his ex-wife Kim was trying to put him under conservatorship with Taylor's help. And then in the summer of 2020, just months before Kim filed for divorce, Kanye publicly accused her of trying to lock him up. So as you can see, there are many parallels between Kanye and Britney, but there are also a lot of parallels between Kim and Justin Timberlake, because just like Kim, Justin has a long track record of using people to further his own career and then throwing them under the bus when they're no longer needed. To give you some context, Britney and Justin broke up in 2001 after a couple of years of dating, and it didn't take long before Justin started showing his ugly side, mocking her in interviews, accusing her of cheating without any proof, and shaming her every chance he got. And it was a different time then, so other celebs like Eminem were quick to jump on the hate train, calling out Britney for being a bad influence on girls. Well, if she wants to look, you know, if she wants to, to, to be on her album cover, like, <laughs> and then, you know, end up dressing trashy at the VMAs. And my little girl is a fan, you know what I mean? She listens to some of her music. And what happens is these little girls start looking up to her because she is like this cute little teeny bopper. Then all of a sudden, boom. Shortly after his breakup with Britney was made public, Justin did an interview with Barbara Walters, portraying himself as the sweet, naive guy who was taken advantage of. And though Justin denied writing any songs about his breakup with Britney, when Walters asked him to play something on the piano, he performed an unreleased song titled Horrible Woman, which seemed to be a not-so-subtle reference to Britney. He denies that any were written specifically for Britney. Yet when we sat down at the piano and asked him to play something from Justified, he chose instead to play a song that nobody has ever heard before. Interesting lyrics. Mind you, Britney was just 19 years old when she and Justin broke up, and yet she was crucified over cheating allegations that were never even proven. And to top it all off, Justin even got his mom to talk about how heartbroken he was after Britney left him. You know, I cried with him and said, it'll be okay. Yeah, tomorrow I'll come. <laughs> I just want him to be happy. How's he was he? heartbroken. But that's not even the worst part of this interview, because Justin also tried to shame Britney for saying she wanted to wait until marriage to be intimate. And when Walters asked Justin if he and Britney honored that, Justin sarcastically replied, sure, before bursting into laughter. Britney has always said, and I'm quoting, good morals mean waiting to have sex until after you've been married. I would definitely Take agree with her water. on that. Okay. Did you and she live up to this during your relationship? Sure. 
<laughs> After this interview aired, the media and Justin's fans became even more vicious to Britney, while Justin continued to exploit the situation to his advantage. In December 2002, he dropped the music video for the track Crimea River, which showed him getting revenge on a cheating girlfriend, played by a total Britney lookalike. But Justin didn't stop there and kept milking this situation for years. In 2006, he released the track What Goes Around Comes Around, which was described by critics as a sequel to Crimea River. And Justin conveniently released this song shortly after Britney experienced several public breakdowns amid her divorce from Kevin Federline. But it wasn't enough for Justin to kick Britney when she was down, so he again talked about their breakup in his 2018 autobiography, Hindsight, describing how angry he was while writing Crimea River. I've been scorned, Justin wrote. I've been pissed off. The feelings I had were so strong, I had to write it. But unlike many female artists who were called bitter for writing songs about their breakups, no one ever criticized Justin for any of this. And it wasn't until the Framing Britney Spears documentary came out in 2021 that the public finally realized how Justin exploited Britney's pain and used the publicity surrounding their breakup to further his career. The documentary also exposed how Justin bragged about sleeping with Britney in a radio interview and then turned around and tried to shame her for not waiting until marriage. As the New York Times critic Wesley Morris said in the documentary, people treated Britney like she was the school sl and Justin was the quarterback. But Britney isn't the only woman Justin used for his own gain. After Framing Britney Spears came out, fans took to social media to say that Justin should also apologize to Janet Jackson for the infamous Super Bowl incident. During Janet's halftime show at the 2004 Super Bowl, Justin ripped Janet's top, later claiming it was an accident. However, many fans suspected that this was planned. And yet, only Janet was forced to apologize to the public for offending them, and she was even banned from hosting the Grammys. Meanwhile, Justin again played the victim and claimed the incident caused him embarrassment, saying he was frustrated that his character was being questioned. After framing Britney Spears started making a lot of noise, Justin finally decided to address his past behavior, and in February 2021, he posted a message on Instagram saying he was deeply sorry for the times in his life where his actions contributed to the problem. Justin acknowledged that he benefited from a system that condones misogyny and racism, before adding that he specifically wants to apologize to Britney and Janet because he knows he failed them. However, Justin then went on to talk about how the music industry is flawed, and it sounded like he was once again making excuses and trying to shift blame. In the meantime, Justin also got involved in a feud with Kanye West, which further fueled the conversation about Justin being an opportunist. During his speech at the VMAs, Kanye seemingly threw shade at Justin for being envious of other artists, and he claimed that Justin cried after he didn't win a Grammy back in 2007. Listen, I ain't trying to put you on blast, but I saw that man in tears, bro. Kanye later again called out Justin during a performance and said he doesn't F with suit and tie. And I can love the whole with that suit and tie. And now that reports emerge that Justin is responsible for the delay of Britney's memoir, fans are saying Kanye obviously realized a long time ago that Justin is two-faced and the public is only now catching up. According to The Sun, both Justin and Britney's other ex, Colin Farrell, threatened legal action against Britney unless she removed certain parts from her memoir, and the book was delayed four months while Justin and Colin's lawyers went back and forth with the publisher. Britney's fans are now dragging Justin and saying Kanye was right the whole time. And but let's hear your thoughts on Justin Timberlake. How do you feel about him trying to block Britney from exposing him in her book? Let us know in the comments. 